He's from Flint, Michigan, so emotionally he's ready for this game. They do have a little bit of experience in the middle. In fact, experience on the whole team. They have five seniors, but Gerard Coleman, a guy who they're really going to count on. Gerard Coleman should be a forward, but he's, he's at the center position, and maybe he's a little quicker than what Michigan has down underneath. When you talk about Michigan, they are a team that has been there before, and that may be their greatest asset, but they also have a player who everybody is talking about. Illinois State certainly talking about him. You have to contain Ramil Robinson. I don't know if it's possible, although he's giving up the ball a lot more than he did last year when they won the national championship, he could score 30 at any night. Different philosophy for Michigan this year. Last year, go for the screen, get Glenn Rice the ball and let him shoot it. This year, they're looking at jamming in a little more with Terry Mills. Terry Mills at this point said to everyone yesterday, no one in the nation can stop me defensively. The only way I can be stopped is if I foul out of the ball game. Terry Mills is ready. Steve Fisher is a guy who says his team plays better loose than it does when it's uptight. He says, but there's a thin line between being loose and not concentrating. They'll have to concentrate. Barry Tompkins with Mike Rice back at the Long Beach Arena. The Illinois State Redbirds against the Michigan Wolverines. Let's meet the players and coaches with the public address announcer here in Long Beach, Dan Smith. Dan? We'll get to those introductions in just a moment. Still a couple of minutes before we have a chance to meet the opening lineups. The Michigan Wolverines, I think probably their biggest thing that they have to concern themselves with is just thinking a little bit too easily. Now let's meet the players and coaches with Dan Smith. Dan? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Long Beach Arena for the first round of the 1990 NCAA Men's Basketball Tournament. Tonight's game features the Illinois State Redbirds and the University of Michigan Wolverines. Here are tonight's starting lineups. At forward for Illinois State, a 6'5 sophomore from Chicago, Illinois, number 42, Scott Fowler. At forward for Michigan, a 6'7 senior from Rosemont, Illinois, number 20, Mike Griffin. At forward for Illinois State, a 6'5 senior from Mount Morris, Michigan, number 43, Ricky Jackson. At forward for Michigan, a 6'9 senior from Grand Rapids, Michigan, number 35, Roy Bott. At center for the Redbirds, a 6'7 senior from North Chicago, Illinois, number 52, Gerard Coleman. At center for the Wolverines, a 6'10 senior from Romulus, Michigan, number 52, Terry Mills. At guard for Illinois State, a six-foot freshman from Chicago, Illinois, number 14, Richard Thomas. At guard for Michigan, a 6'1 junior from Flint, Michigan, number 13, Demetrius Caleb. At guard for the Redbirds, a 6'3 senior from Peoria, Illinois, number 23, Randy Blair. And at guard for Michigan, a 6'2 senior from Cambridge, Massachusetts, number 21, Ramil Robinson. The head coach of the Illinois State Redbirds in his first season is Bob Bender. The head coach of the Michigan Wolverines in his second season is Steve Fisher. So those are the participants that don't you know right now on the Illinois State bench, visions of Northern Iowa dancing in their heads. Back with the opening tip-off after this. Back at the Long Beach Arena in Long Beach. This is the third game of the day. Things have followed form so far. Illinois State hopes that they won't this time. Look at Michigan's final four appearances. They lost to Duke in the third round. And, of course, last year, the national champions beating Seton Hall in a memorable game. As to Illinois State, they've been here four, four times in the last eight years. Haven't done real well. They beat USC back in 85 and then lost to Oklahoma. So they've been able to win a first game on two of the three occasions at any rate in recent times. John Clockerty, the lead official with Gordon Burke and George Evans. And we're set to get underway. Coleman and Mills to jump. Griffin controls the opening tip off for Michigan. Key player in this game, Randy Blair, who is going to try to check Ramil Robinson early. <laughs> Key is the word. And check is a key word there, too. He didn't do it right there. Robinson, a quick move to the basket for the lay-in. They 
They'll try to play tempo if they can. Keep it down a little bit. Take good shots, high percentage shots. Down low it goes to Coleman, and he's short with a shot. That looked clearly like a case of nerves. Traveling on Robinson. They want to score inside in this game against Michigan. Take it right at them and play great defense at the other end. But as you said, Barry, that did look like a lot of nerves on Coleman's part. Have a look at Steve Fisher, one of the nice guys in college basketball. Goes down low to Fowler, pulls up at the jumper, can't get it. A rebound down to Voigt. I beg your pardon, Lloyd Voigt. Lloyd, the leading rebounder in the Big Ten. Demetrius Caleb. Well, Illinois State hopes he doesn't start out like he did against Iowa, hitting five in a row earlier this year. He can shoot it. He takes a little bit of the pressure off Ramil Robinson. Because half the time he plays the point, the other time Ramil does. Thomas, just a freshman, drew the foul that time on Griffin. Griffin doing what he does best, playing defense, drawing fouls. Fans in Michigan, every time he touches the ball, yells, shoot, shoot. <laughs> no one here will do that. Doesn't do it very much. Yeah. But Steve Fisher feels that he's one of his two best defensive players, along with Sean Higgins. To the basket that time, Thomas. Well, Bob Bender said the freshman plays the best in big games, even though he is a freshman. And he didn't look nervous on that. And a turnover. So Illinois State getting a little bit of confidence early here. Blair right oh. by Griffin. Hundred points, hundred assists, hundred rebounds the last two years. So he does it all. And Michigan tried to jam it in, and another turnover. They're collapsing very well. Thomas ahead of the pack. <laughs> I think it's been historic in this tournament that if an underdog team like Illinois State is going to win, they've got to get out of the blocks quickly. And that is a key and play good inside defense against Michigan. Robinson, what a move. <laughs> Robinson plays big. Yes, yeah, he's so strong physically. If a quick guard checks him, they run a lot of picks for him and he posts up down low. Anybody else, he can go outside and shoot. Blair behind a screen, had it flicked away by Griffin. Nice play by Mills to run it down. Griffin all the way to the basket. He's one for one. <laughs> Only takes about four shots a game, so 25% of his shooting is done for the night. 12 points is his career high. He's played in 130 games for this Michigan team. Fowler faces up against Vaught. Kicks it out to Thomas. Thomas, little sidearm shot. Thomas with six quick ones. All the writers said if there were one game that might be a blowout, it would be this one. So far, Illinois State doesn't think so. Nice look by Mills to Robinson. Well, they were worried about Robinson outside penetration. Randy Blair better worry about inside post-up. his defense he's being picked a lot underneath and Mr. Coleman better start switching a little bit to help him out and they're gonna have to help out that according to Bob Bender Jackson misses a jumper one shot only bought the rebound Michigan perfect so far they're five for five and, uh, the only starter that doesn't shoot 50 percent has the ball right there there's Mills in the tournament too hard one shot Thomas who's been all over the place they got the numbers now three on two Blair on the wing to the basket <laughs> no goaltending Thomas gets it back crowd wants goaltending Bob Bender wants goaltending won't happen I thought it was a good call Griffin nice weak side help block Coleman leans in good pass by Blair here's a look at Bob Bender first year coach Mike Krzyzewski protege plays defense his ball club is something like do Robinson a quick shot that time it'll be out of bounds though to Michigan and we'll take a timeout 15 54 remaining we're tied 10 and 10 we'll be back to Long Beach after this TAA tournament scores out of the Midwest region Northern Illinois a 21 point winner over Texas Tech good win for them Southern Mississippi by 10 over LSU Ohio State wins in the men's, wins in the women's, wins by 12 over Southern Illinois. Tough time for the Salukis. Michigan over Oklahoma State, 77 
to 68. That's in the Midwest region women's play. Southeast Conference and Big Ten really getting the lion's share of the bids in that women's NCAA. John Pemberton in the ball game now for Bob Bender. They lack a little in speed, but it gives them a little bit of bulk. Sean Higgins, his first try up and good. This ball club, as we said earlier, will pattern their defense after Duke. A lot of inside, weak side help. Sean Higgins got himself over in the corner and really banged it home. Antoine Hicks also on for Bob Bender. Inside it goes to Coleman, missed the shot, got it back. Tried to put it up, no call. Boy, they're letting him play here. And Mills comes away from Michigan. They got the numbers now, five on two. Mills tried to get it through. Nice play defensively by Hicks. Now they have the numbers. Ahead it goes to Jackson. Gimme. Jackson wants a big game. He's from Flint, Michigan, played with Roy Marble in high school, and uh, he is really fired up playing Michigan. And let the fans back home see him, what he can do. That was a big-time play by Antoine Hicks, because Michigan had a five on two. I don't know if the pass was real good by Bill. Not two. Bott makes a little jumper. That one was bad. What a high-low situation that is. Bought to Mill. Bob Bender said what he has to do with it is just try to front him. It'll give, they'll give up a couple of lobs probably, but they just have to try to deny the big men from Michigan the ball. Against Duke and against this Illinois State team, it's so much easier to get it inside if you can throw it in from the high post. They really give great weak side help because they always front the pivot men. They give weak side help if you throw it in from the side. So if Michigan go, can go high-low with Bott and Mill, what a weapon that'll be. Jackson's jump stop into the lane. Too hard off the glass. One shot, Mills clears the board. Here comes Robinson the other way, pushing it up the floor. All the way along the baseline, missed the shot. Pembroke couldn't hold onto the rebound, but Jackson does. Or Blair does, rather. Gives it up to Jackson. Opportunity jumper for three. Count it, and a foul. He'll go to the line with a chance for a four-point play. And that was a great call. They did hit the elbow. And if Ricky Jackson gets hot, Things could really be interesting right here. There's a save right there. Now, there's the Michael Jordan look-alike at Blair. Jackson stops. There's the foul across the wrist. Four-point play. He is a Michael Jordan look-alike, isn't he? You know, when you really look at him close. Of course, I should hasten to point out there were a lot of horses that looked like secretariat. <laughs> Well, we're going to see what Randy can do defensively tonight, the rest of the night on Robinson. Then I'll let you know. Tally in the ball game now for Steve Fisher. Michael Tally just a freshman on the Detroit Cooley. Mills with a jumper. He missed that shot, and they're only getting one shot, too. Redbird's doing a good job on the boards. Pembroke ahead of the pack, leans in and has it. They were worried about Michigan's rebounding. So far, Illinois State has answered the call in every department, running the ball and rebounding. Tally in for offensive reasons. They won the state championship in Detroit at Cooley three years in a row, and this young man can put it up. Robinson down low again, finger rolls it in. What a move. Well, right now it looks like any isolation at all for that Ramil is great. Eight points in the ballgame for Ramil. Jackson for three. That was from NBA three-point. <laughs> Does he feel like he's hot? One thing Illinois State's going to have to do is get back a little bit quicker because Michigan's getting the numbers almost every time down. A reach-in foul on Ramil Robinson. Right now, the lineup that Illinois State has in the ball game, they send four to the offensive board, and they only have one guard back. They may get a rebound, or they may get scored on in the other end. There's a look at Bob Bender, and he has really done a very good job in his first year of coaching here at Illinois State. He said himself he started out a little slowly in the preseason games, but his team finished very strongly, and I guess any coach, given their choice, would rather finish strongly than start strongly especially at the tournaments on your home court. 12 teams won the bid by playing on their home court. Nice pass that time to Pembroke underneath, and the pass was made by Scott Bottom. Since Scott lost the weight early in the season, he has played great basketball for this ball club. He's averaged about 15 a game the last eight games. As you mentioned, he lost about 25 pounds, and Bob Bender said all he did was remind him of Popeye Jones and Dennis Scott. And if you looked at the numbers of Jones and Scott yesterday, 
Exactly. That was some pretty good advice. Right. I used to call him Wimpy. <laughs> Here comes Higgins off the miss from Jackson. Higgins pulls up. It won't go. Second try underneath. Is put in by Riley. Here he comes Riley. The bench. They redshirted him. They tried to make him live in the weight room. He ended up losing a couple of pounds. So. Yeah, he's just one of those guys, Steve Fisher says, just cannot gain weight. Jackson again. Oh. For three. Well, this is a horse race. Illinois State was supposed to slow it up a little. They're trying to take it right to Michigan. And so far, they're doing it. Jackson has nine points. Foul called on Hicks this time. Bob Bender, we asked him if he was going to change anything for Michigan, and he said no. He says, I find that when you change things for a specific team, it kind of takes your own team's confidence away. They start thinking, maybe we're not that good. So he said, I'm not going to change anything. We're going to play them the same way as we played anybody else, and we hope our team's confidence stays up. It is. 19, 11, 43 left. A couple of other scores out of the East before we get back to action. UCLA wins it by 12. Pac-10 doing very well. Arizona, California, and UCLA all with a win. In the Southeast region, Syracuse beats Coppin State handily. I don't think that falls in the category of surprise. And out of the Midwest region, Texas runs up 100 points in beating Georgia. Good win for Texas. Southwest Conference, Arkansas, Texas. Houston went down, but they have two left. Here, both teams shooting it extremely well. Bought with the basket and the foul. And now Michigan, 10 out of 17 shooting it. Illinois State, 10 out of 19. Both teams shooting. And at the timeout, I'm sure Steve Fisher said, guys, we got Bought and Mills, and no one has stopped them yet. Let's get them the ball. And right there, Bought powered his way for that two-point. He'll go to the free throw line. Bought averaging 15 a game. Good free throw shooter, 82%. Where Illinois State is really shining tonight is offensively. They, they don't have the answer as Michigan goes into a big 1 2 2 zone. The uh, and big front line back there with Riley and Vaught. And that opens up this shot. Jackson can't get that one to fall. Flores fights for the rebound. Jackson runs it down. And like a lot of man to man teams, they don't really box out well when they get into a zone. Michigan didn't that time. Jackson open again for the three. Short again. They'll keep giving it to him as long as Jackson keeps throwing it up like that. Loose ball still on the floor. Picked up by Thomas. Throws it up. Almost got it down. He's fouled and he'll go to the line. Thomas, the freshman, has really been a factor on the offense. You know, I, I really thought he'd be nervous tonight. And look at the rebound. And as you see, Michigan is just trying to out-jump people. They're not going to get too many loose balls, but as you see, there's a lot of tall timber there for Michigan. And they just, Illinois State outworked them inside. I guess they said that was before the shot, not in the act of shooting. Yes, I, I think it was in the scramble for the loose ball to follow her. Blair steps in for the two, had a split on the line, two-point shot. He's the defender of the year in the Missouri Valley. He didn't say anything about offender of the year, and uh, he's looking to score both guards. Giving away a couple of inches to the man he's guarding right now, though, Sean Higgins. There's perfect Illinois State defense. Front the inside man, make him throw the perfect lob pass, and give a lot of weak side help for the double team. Here, an excellent job down low. Here it is again. You see four men inside for Illinois State. That's Bender's defense. And Robinson, the foul, I think before the shot. I'm not sure if they will give Ramil Robinson the free throw tries here. The problem here is they don't work as well when a guard gets down in here. As you see, the big people were outside checking the passers. And Ramil Robinson, as you said, Barry, he will not shoot the foul shots. Well, they don't like the way Robinson plays down low, though. Oh, just so physically strong. And Randy Blair is a great defensive player, and so far, Robinson really has taken advantage of it. There's Higgins open for the jumper. Too hard. Vaughn over the top for the rebound. <laughs> over the second try. Starting to get a couple of more second tries now. That's something that Steve Fisher figured was a key to the game, that they had to get second shots. And they got it that time against the zone. Illinois State will play the zone on the out-of-bounds play. Vaughn pick clean. Grab Jackson, no call. Grab Blair, rather, no call. Here's Thompson. He takes the jump and got it off the glass. And he'll say to Bob Bender, exactly the way I shot it. But he won't fool us. <laughs> <laughs> Biggest lead of the game for Illinois State. 
Eight points for Thomas. He's only averaging eight and a half of the season. Michigan has the starters back in there. Watch Ramil try to take his man one-on-one -on -one now coming up underneath. And watch the way Illinois State just tries to front the Michigan big man. And we'll see who that's going against. I think it's going against Riley. Yes, he was pushing off once again. That's what they want to make you do. You, they front. There's three ways you can play that inside defensive guy. Play on the side, play behind, or front. They front the inside people right here. You'll see. Now there, they're getting around in front of them. Look at the weak side help behind. They have everything closed up. Mr. Riley got a little frustrated, pushed off. Young man from Cleveland, St. Joe's. And for that, he gets to sit. Terry Mills comes back for Steve Fisher. Gerard Coleman comes back for Bob Bender. They're going to make sure they're ready to play this game in the second half. Last substitution. So far, the Redbirds doing it, I'm sure, exactly the way Bender would have hoped. Coleman gets a second try underneath, missed it. Tough against that zone inside, but they're not rebounding until then. That was Xavier, Xavier Williams with the miss. Williams actually a seldom used reserve, getting some early playing time here. Up over the top this time for the foul, Roberts, or rather Fowler. And this game is going so physical that I think Coach Bender's throwing a lot of people in. There's the pass inside. Great block. <laughs> Iffy on the goal ten. I'm not sure if I'd want to go under there. That, that looks like it could get dangerous. Very physical. Michigan ball out of bounds. Griffin the jumper. And it won't go. Follow the rebound. Two shots now tonight. So he has half his total of four. You have to take him when you're open. And he's a high percentage shooter. It isn't that he can't shoot it. Go. Still in that zone. It's a point drop zone. And Higgins is not, he's not dropping it. He's not getting back. So they can exploit that. Higgins, who's playing in that point drop, he's not getting down to the low post. And uh, if they do try to throw it in, they figure they have Mills back there and Vaught. They'll do the blocking, so Higgins can loaf a little on defense. This is a one-and-one -one situation now. That was the seventh team foul. And Steve Fisher's team now staring a whole bunch of free throws in the face if this game stays as physical as it has. If Bob Bender can get away with some of his subs in the game and keep these starters fresh, they may be able to hang in there. Gerard Coleman, 67% of the line misses it. That's going to be a real factor, how they shoot free throws. I think so. Michigan has a lot of horses over there that they can come in with. And the bumping won't bother them playing in the Big Ten. Lloyd Vaught. Short. Stepping in, that's fine. <laughs> they got away with one there. He can shoot up to eight feet. Oh. Any for the <laughs> offensive foul call against Fowler. As he knocked Griffin about eight feet, I'd say. Well, since he started in the lineup, they're 12 and 3. They had a big meeting. Ooh, and they're definitely, <laughs> definitely a charge. Put his head down. Got out of control. They had a meeting in the January this year, and uh, they were, I think, three and six, six and nine on the year. And uh, since that time, they're 12 and three with Scott Fowler in the lineup. And sometimes those secret meetings, those midnight meetings, can produce things. Fowler sits, and Pemberton comes back on now. Higgins tried to get it inside. Jackson fronted him. Everyone was shocked when Higgins gave it up from 10 feet. Doesn't do it very often. Thomas open for the three. That's too hard. And a shotgun that shot up there. <laughs> There's an NBA rebounder to Vaughn. Higgins open this time. Miss it again. Higgins missed his last three. Got the ball back. Mills did. Nice yeah. kick. Big time play by Terry Mills. <laughs> Romulus All-American Terry Mills can do other things besides shoot. Coleman open, banked it in from behind the basket. That's a tough shot. <laughs> They're hanging in there, but it looks like at this pace, Illinois State will have to get some subs in there. They're going to a zone right now. Kind of a smart move by Bob Bender. Doesn't play it very often, but he's trying to save his troops. And his substitution pattern has been just excellent. Knocked out of bounds by Jackson again. We said that Jackson had to do a lot in this game if Illinois State is going to do well. So far, he has, and they are. They lead by five. We'll be back. Higgins. 
course, he was hurt early in the year, missed about eight games. And since coming back, he thinks his role has changed, that his job is to get the ball to Mills. And if it is, he really came through in his role right there. He got it to Mills. He thinks his role is shooting. <laughs> but he showed right there he can pass the ball. Yeah, he's been pretty unselfish in this game. Terry Mills, as you see, on a real roll. Make that 25. 25 in a row. He's shooting 59, 60% on the year from the field. So he has been unstoppable. Oh, here's a miss. Yeah. Yeah, broke a streak there. He hadn't missed a free throw in five games. I knew as soon as you said that. Of course. Absolutely. Kiss of death. Michigan moving their pressure to midcourt. Most of the Big Ten teams, as the games go along, will move their man-to-man -man pressure out to midcourt. Romeo Robinson just a little reach-in foul that time. His second, but it'll put Thomas at the free throw line. Steve Fisher thinks they're playing much better defensively this year than last year. I said, then maybe another national championship. He said, it's all luck. He said, you know, you, we had against Illinois last year, there were, there were games that we just, a lot of luck. Played in. You got to be lucky to win the national championship. Thomas already over his season's average with nine points. Came in averaging eight and a half on the year. He'll be around for three more years, and that does not bode well for opponents in the Missouri Valley. Bob Bender said, I said, can a freshman play well against Michigan in a big game like this? He said this will be his best game of the year. <laughs> yeah, he said he plays his best against the best. Yeah, and he really is. He was the only recruit last year for this Illinois State team. Stepping in front nicely, Pembroke diving for a ball boy. Is there any coach in America that doesn't like to see that? Oh, yes, yes. Really worked hard, Pemberton. Senior. Last two games of the tournament, he had 13 rebounds coming off the bench for Illinois State. Robinson, he draws a crowd. Mills the jumper. They'll give him that shot, and he'll make it. Oh, that's, that's a tough shot. <laughs> Especially if a guy can post up like he does, he can go out and shoot that little short one. <laughs> Very difficult on the defense. Thomas right around Robinson into the lane too hard off the glass. Riley the rebound. He's had a few. Here comes Michigan. Three on three. They got back that time. Higgins open. Won't go. A little off balance. He rushed that shot a little bit. <laughs> open was the key word. When he's open, he's going to shoot it. Blair is open. Missed the three. Long rebound. Thomas gets it back. Give it up to Jackson. Right around Robinson to the basket. Short. They can't miss those. You're right. Those are the kind that'll keep them in the ball game. They have to make the easy ones. Robinson through traffic. Reversed by Higgins. Won't go. Jeff Blair the rebound. And Michigan's really getting after the offensive rebounds with the game at this tempo. Thomas will take it. He's open. He missed it. Pemberton the rebound. Thomas tried to get it inside. A little too cute. Here comes Griffin. Robinson the trailer. And a foul called on Blair stepping in. The tempo is too fast for Illinois State at this point. The big people that Michigan have can really operate at this speed, and I think they'll have to slow it down. There's the pass back, and nice defensive inside play by Griffin, and that's what he's noted for, and that's why he's in the ball game. Good move. I'd hate to be the guy back going against Ramil Robinson on a one-on-one. -on -one. Sonny Roberts will come back, replacing Pemberton, who gave Bob Bender some very good minutes. This is an experienced Illinois State team, even though Bob Bender in his first year, but Roberts is senior, Pemberton is a senior, Jackson is a senior, Gerard Coleman is a senior, Blair is a senior. These are guys who've been there. Bob Donawal was pointing for this year before he got fired, and now he's at Western Michigan building a program, but this was going to be his big year at Illinois State. Yet another reason why I don't know anyone would want to be a basketball coach. <laughs> Turn around, Coleman, it won't go. The follow by Jackson won't go, and Roberts can't get the rebound. Mills does, two on one. Caleb to the basket. Clinic, two on one passing. Caleb Robinson, very, very unselfish. That's how you win a national championship. Now is the time that Illinois State cannot wilt. 
two theories on that two-on-one. You either take it real hard, make the defensive man commit, or you pass it back and forth and make him drop step and get him off balance. Michigan did the latter and to perfection. Thomas comes out. And coming back, Antoine Hicks at 5'9". will give away a little size. Won't Maybe. give away too much for Caleb, though, sorry. Jackson missed everything. They're getting a little sloppy now. And I was just about to say, they need Ricky Jackson to get in the flow of the offense again. But that wasn't the flow. Jackson tried to get around Griffin. A fall away and another bad shot. That's two bad shots Jackson's taken in a row. And here come the Wolverines. Nice leave to Mills from Robinson. Everything except the basket. <laughs> Terry was a little surprised on the pass. Ramil says, I'm not giving you any more of those if you don't make them. Redbirds have now missed their last six shots, and they haven't been high percentage shots. Very perfect on the nose. They haven't taken good shots, and that one is new. And Bob Bender will take a timeout, and I think you'll agree that's a good timeout with 320 remaining, and we're tied at 31. We'll be back. This telecast is presented by authority of the NCAA. Any use of this program without written consent is prohibited. The announcers for this program have been approved and contracted by NCAA Productions. He told me to do it fast. <laughs> Tied at 31. Take a look at this. Nice fast break here. This is the way it's done. Illinois State in trying to rebound back and forth. And uh, you work on that from October 15th on. And when you see it, you're happy. There is Fowler. He's either enjoying a different view or he has a back problem. Yeah, that's what I would suspect. I don't think he'd be laying down on the job here. Robinson, what a move in traffic. Flicked away, but I think that's with slows up a little bit and then a crossover and really pushes it into another gear. And uh, when you can do that, you go on to that league with three letters. They have a three-point shooting competition in the at the final four, and they want to Ramil Robinson to enter the three-point shooting competition. And some of the people at the University of Michigan said, three-point shooting, forget it. We'll put him in a slam dunk competition because he'll win it. Yeah, I watched him in the, the shoot-around yesterday, really. He's had some great games this year. He had 33 against Minnesota, 13 for 18 from the field, 3 for 4 from three-point. And you watched his progress from year to year there. He had six rebounds and five assists that game. And... Uh, when I asked him if that's his best game ever, he said, oh, no, no. <laughs> of course, in the NCAA tournament last year through six games, averaged almost 17, made those crucial free throws. He's another one of those guys. You look at his free throw shooting percentage, 68%, you say, well, he doesn't shoot free throws very well, except when he has to make them. Oh, yes, down the crunch time, as it's called, Ramil goes into action. Steve Fisher overworking the official over there. Gordon Burke from the sideline. You don't see Steve do that very often. It's an important possession for Illinois State and a turnover. Hicks just didn't know what to do with the ball. Here's Robinson. Nice give to Caleb. Oh. The call block falls. Looked like a foul to me. Boy, they let him play. <laughs> nice follow-up. As we said, two fresh people bought in the game with Riley. Playing a lot better defense now, Michigan. Keeping everyone fresh. Two turnovers in a row. Bob Bender staying cool. Great pass here. Left-handed. Crossed. There's a little push. Uh, look at they don't know who, I don't know who to give credit for that one. <laughs> There's a lot of people dunking that ball. Who did we give that to? Give it to Bot? I, I think so. He's bigger and stronger. I wouldn't want to get him upset. Not giving him an easy <laughs> one. Bot not real good out there passing. But they're moving now, the Illinois State defense around. Oh, uh, that's an offensive foul, I would think. Yes. Yeah. I don't want to make the call ahead of the officials here. <laughs> yeah, nice defense here by Illinois State. Really moving the feet into the middle. Look at the feet move right there. Close. I'd, I'd say it's an offensive foul. Yes, yes. They're trained to jump back. In fact, Steve Fisher said uh, he was telling his players they always fake charges. That time it didn't look like they had to fake, but he said in the championship game against Southern Illinois, the movie he watched, they picked up about four or five charges at crucial times by jumping back. It sounds like a Duke move, doesn't it? Well, what do you suppose? <laughs> Jackson too hard off the glass. Their shooting has been atrocious. They are over their last eight, nine. 
And now they're going to have to do well just to keep contact before the half. Go in, talk it over, get yourself together again. As Bob Bender talked about so much, we can't lose our character. So he's got to rebuild the character at halftime. Because he really right now, does. they're yes. in danger of having things fall apart here. Still only a four-point game. Yes, they just, uh, they let the offense get away from the Illinois Stingry group. You don't want to play a wild game against Michigan because they just, the athletic ability they have, and it's bigger than everybody else's athletic ability. Loy Vaught, excellent free throw shooter, 82%. And it's a six-point lead. It looks like he has a lot of touch on his passes or jump shot. He gets on that foul line. <laughs> 0 for 10 shooting over the last two or three minutes for Illinois State. It has cost them what was a five-point lead, and instead they trail by six. 37-31 Michigan. Illinois State has not only been in this game, they had controlled the game for about the first 16 minutes of the half. But in the last three minutes, things have come apart. Foul called against Riley. Both teams really throwing the substitutes in. And Michigan's bench has been a little better than Illinois State's bench. And the fact that Illinois State is really falling apart on their shot selections. First 10 minutes of the game, they did everything right. Now they're playing Michigan's game. Well, it'll be over your last 10 and still be within six. That's not too bad, as you see, 11-0 over the last nearly six minutes for Michigan. They're trying to come up with an idea <laughs> that will help them in the locker room at halftime. And I'll tell you, so far, free throw shooting hasn't been the idea. They got that one. It wasn't pretty, but it went down. Well, when you're 0 for 10 from the field, you, you deserve a, a soft iron. So Gerard Coleman will try to get the Redbirds back to within four. Bob Bender said he wouldn't slow it up because he didn't want to put pressure on every shot to make it a big one. But I don't think he had this in mind that <laughs> just to shoot any shot. Caleb steps in with a right hand, won't go. And Riley trying to keep it alive, hammered out of bounds by Riley. It'll be the Redbirds ball. Riley had a great game against Duke early in the year when Mills was in foul trouble. So he's very capable of scoring against a tough man-to-man -to -man defense. That's Chris Setter who has just come on. We actually didn't expect to see him in this tournament at all. He suffers from hypoglycemia. That's a low blood sugar, and he gets very tired very quickly, and they're trying to work on that and resolve it. But in the meantime, he can only play a few minutes at a time. I find the same problem. It's called age. Yeah, I think that's right. Look at the defense of Michigan really going at it strong. Since they've been out of that zone, they've really played well. Jackson off balance, but he nails it. And it's back to a three-point game. Something we saw early in the first half. Jackson going strong, but not in the last 12 minutes. Michigan will play for the last shot. Shot clock off. As you see, 30 seconds left in the half. All in all, the way Illinois has shot the last six minutes, they are very fortunate to be in the game. They led the game for nearly all the first half. Michigan went in front for the first time with about two minutes to go in a half. Now they'll kick it out. Put it in the hands of Demetrius Caleb. Caleb has taken a lot of pressure off of Emil Robinson. Robinson not even in the game right now. Now he takes a bad shot. And the rebound comes down to Pemberton who loses it to Vaughn. And it is no basket. No basket. Bob so, Bender was right out of the court. I think he convinced him. I'll tell you what, he dodged another bullet. He dodged a few of them in this first half. By and large, though, his Illinois State team played very well. Watch the clock. Watch Caleb. He forced the shot. Now watch. Pemberton hits the rebound. Two seconds. One. Vaught picks it up. I think it was a good close. call. Very close, though. <laughs> Very close. If we had the stopwatch of the, the hundredths of a second like they do in the NBA, might have been a different story. As it is, Michigan by three at the half. <laughs> Halftime in Long Beach, Michigan 37, Illinois State 34. But, Mike, I got to think that Bob Bender's a pretty happy guy right now. His team hit a real bad flat spot, and they still only trail by three. They haven't stopped Ramil Robinson. They haven't stopped Terry Mills. They're only three down, so... Uh, 
what looked like a real bad shot selection may be a plus going into the locker room. If they can get that straightened out, they might be in the yeah, game. They are playing very confidently. If anything, they might be a little bit too loose. They did take some bad shots. Yes, and Ricky Jackson, they need to get him controlled a little bit because Michigan has found real difficulty checking him outside. But defensively, they are doing a pretty good job. The story of the first half, really, while it is Michigan's comeback because they were behind, they still managed to, Illinois State, that is, managed to defend Michigan pretty darn well. Close game in Long Beach. We'll be back. 37-34, the Michigan Wolverines defending national champions, leading the upstart Illinois State Redbirds under Bob Bender, a first-year coach, 18 games during the season. They won. They trail Michigan by only three. NCAA Executive Director Dick Schultz spoke recently with Frank Bowl of WDAF in Kansas City. He spoke about a wide range of topics affecting intercollegiate athletics. Let's take a look now at part of that interview. Western Regional in Long Beach, Michigan 37, Illinois 34. We have the athletic director at University of Michigan, Jack Wiedenbach. Wiedenbach. <laughs> I'll have it. This is not the only team you have in the NCAAs this year. No, uh, uh, our, uh, our uh, women's basketball team uh, won their first round, uh, beat a very good Oklahoma State basketball team, and they're on the way to Raleigh to play North Carolina State. So, Your new coach, Steve Fisher, what kind of grade is he getting the first year in Division I? I think Steve has done a great job. You know, it's hard to come back and, uh, and uh, win again. And uh, so I think Steve has, has brought this team along great, and we're delighted to be here. Good luck in the second half, and I'll tell Steve about that. Okay. See you, Mike. Thank you. Our next guest, Ron Wellman, as we go through athletic directors here. You also have a new coach that uh, hasn't done a real bad job this year. He's done a great job. I don't know if there's anything else that we would ask of him to do. His first year has just been fabulous. Uh, he's getting every ounce out of the players that he possibly can. And I've never really seen a community as enthused about our basketball program as ours is right now. And that's a tribute to Bob. Is it true that they had 2,000 fans come and uh, listen to the uh, show that uh, who they were going to play in the NCAA? Well, that's a conservative estimate. Uh, we didn't want to blow it up too much, but there were at least 2,000 people there. As you can hear by Ron's voice, he's been leading the cheers in the first half for Illinois State. Back to Barry. I think they had about 3,000 for Southern Illinois. The irony is they're still there. 37 people. Maybe Time and we'll be back right after this. Do you know that one out of every five sixth graders cannot locate the United States on a world map? And only one of four high school students can even find Canada? A quarter of our students drop out of school before they're 18. And of the ones who graduate, 700,000 can't read their diplomas. What happened? Traditionally, America's schools developed the knowledge and skills necessary to fulfill our nation's promise. Education always helped young people pass from ignorance to knowledge, from poverty to prosperity, from self-indulgence to self-reliance. All of us must now get involved in fixing our educational system. Business must invest time and expertise in partnership with the school systems to help them undertake fundamental reform. We must get involved now. This message furnished by the NCAA. It's the 1990 NCAA Basketball Championship. Brought to you by Rawlings Sporting Goods, maker of the official ball of the NCAA Basketball Championships. By Pizza Hut, official corporate sponsor of the NCAA. And by the new generation of Oldsmobile. Step into the future now at your Oldsmobile dealer. Tonight's game is also brought to you in part by country companies. When it matters most, the country's behind you.
Perry Tompkins with Mike Rice back at Long Beach. Halftime, let's take a look at some of the numbers. And as you can see, Illinois State with that 0 for 10, their percentage dropping way off. They could be in this ball game if they would have continued shooting like they did early. Free throws, as you see, both teams been at the line a minimum amount of times. Both teams shooting it marginally well. The rebounding, there is no edge for Michigan, and that, too, very much a factor. A surprise. Jackson, Ricky Jackson, took some good shots, like this one. <laughs> and took some bad shots. Yes, he, uh, he had his share of both. Ramil Robinson, though, he is, I hate to go back on what they used to call Reggie Jackson, but he's the straw that stirs the drink. Oh, yes, and there's a great bounce pass with his left hand off the dribble. Not many people can do that with your off hand. So we start the second half, and it is still a game that is up for grabs. Let's see the shot selection the first time down. Oop. First time down, there is no shot selection. Robinson off the pass from Caleb. Couldn't quite get it. Wasn't sure if he wanted to dunk that one or lay it in. Jackson this time on the drive. Pick clean. Got it back, though. Jackson has to be careful not to play out of control. Blair misses a long jumper. And Mills has the rebound for Michigan. Well, we know it's not going to be a slow second half. So their shooting continues to be way off. They have hit a long, dry spell. Another turnover. So their second half starting off rather tentatively for both teams. That's not bad for Illinois State because they haven't played well and they're in the ball game. So if they continue not to play well, they may have a shot. And when we say their shooting has dropped way off, I mean their shooting has dropped way off. Well, one for 13, the last 13 shots. That's not going to win many games. Coleman got it down low. Griffin helped out nicely, but Coleman banked it in. And early, when you said they're letting them play, I would have to agree with you. They're making sure if the foul does not interrupt the play, they're not going to call it, and uh, the players are going to decide. Actually, I would think that would be something that Steve Fisher would prefer. Easy miss by Vaught that time. You're not going to miss too many of those. Not from that range. Jackson wisely backs it out this time. They look down low to Coleman. He's by himself. Too hard off the guy. Bought the rebound. And he's got a bunch. When he rebounds, he rebounds. Pulls it in. Not a great fast break rebounder. He always tucks it in. Never looks for that outlet guy, but he rebounds. His 11th rebound of the game. Boy, that's a career for some of us. He averages 10 in Big Ten play. 10 rebounds. Put it on the floor this time. I think obviously Bender had a little talk with Jackson. That time a lazy pass. Demetrius Kalen. Count it. He'll go to the line. Well, Ricky Thompson tried to set that up. He backed away instead of trying to get the charge. And it all came about with a lost ball. Good hands in there. Look at Caleb come in there. And watch Thomas slow up a little. Now he's going to try to come across and hit the ball. But <laughs> very good. Demetrius Caleb brought the ball back and protected it. Three-point play. Well, as you said, Caleb is a guy who was coming to the lineup. He became a starter when Sean Higgins got the stress fracture. And he's really taken a lot of the pressure off of Ramil Robinson. Robinson doesn't have to handle the ball every time down the floor now. And I think that really does help Ramil. You don't get the uh, really zeroed in on him handling the ball every time. His turnovers have gone way down for Michigan. Caleb comes out to challenge Thomas just as he gets across the timeline. Thomas went right around and Griffin helps out. And now Jackson is saying, no, I don't think I am going to shoot that. <laughs> it was there that time. And again, a lazy pass, but a foul from behind called on Bach. And that time, the Redbirds got away with one. In one area of the game, I have to agree with Coach Fisher. They are much better inside defensively playing the entry pass. Michigan's big people, and you see right there, ooh, that could have been uh, very close to both players going for the ball. Vaughn was the guilty party, his first personal foul. Pemberton down low. Griffin helping out defensively very well. Pemberton missed everything. Home in the foot back. Well, Mr. Mills kind of stood around that time and uh, let the big guy Coleman handle him. Bender trying to go down low in this half to challenge a little bit. Mills, nice jump hook. Yesterday, Terry Mills said, no one in the nation can handle me when I get it down there. Illinois State hasn't handled him. He hasn't had the ball down there very often in this ballgame. Steve Fisher said, when Terry Mills is on, the team is on. Both Vaught and Mills just pushing people out of the way underneath. 
Thank Down low it goes to Coleman yeah. again. Fall away, it won't go. Blair tries to follow, it won't go. Pemberton to follow, and it won't go. They missed three tries, but they will go to the free throw line. That is something very unexpected. Illinois State controlling the offensive rebound. It's also something that Bob Bender said his team had to do. Yes, get some offensive rebounds. You can't let Michigan rebound, and, and they're sending four to the board. Look at four red shirts in there. If Michigan gets it, it's a two-on-one back the other way. Illinois State taking a gamble. Hamilton, as you see, 67% at the line, gets it. Well, Illinois State just won't go away, will it? <laughs> I keep looking up to make sure I have the right score up there. It just looks like uh, Michigan physically is controlling this game, but not on the scoreboard. That's a vote. Back to a two-point game. Can't say enough about how Bob Bender has prepared his team to come in here today. Yes. Mentally, he picked the right game. Don't be afraid to take a shot. Robinson to the basket is undressed. Pemberton is the man who made the foul. That's his second. I like the way they physically are staying into this ball game with their mental aspect. Watch, they're coming in now. They're going to challenge every shooter in there, every rebound. They're not letting Michigan intimidate them physically. Well, and again, because the officials are letting them play, nobody is in any, in any serious foul trouble, so they can challenge. And I like in an NCAA tournament game, that's the way it should be. Let them bump around a little bit. Fowler has come back on and Pemberton sits. The Bender getting very good support off his bench. Yes, something we didn't expect when we uh, talked to the uh, Illinois State people. Neil Robinson and what he did in the tournament last year, of course, has become legend. There's a rebound by Vaughn. Away, shot won't go. And Coleman has a rebound. A push it. Thomas over Caleb. And ahead of the pack is Caleb. And there's that oh. Illinois State people going to the board and getting burned on the other end by Caleb. I think you have to take a chance in some cases. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But they're playing an aggressive ball game, so they're willing to give up that to get an offensive rebound. And they have been offensive rebounding. Five-point Michigan lead. Fowler leads in so hard off the glass. And again, the shooting woes continue for the Redbirds. That wasn't a bad shot. Just didn't go down. Maybe if they took it out of the offense a little bit more. Robinson, a fallaway shot. That's one of those shots I'm sure Steve Fisher said. Oh, no, nice shot. <laughs> well, Bob Bender's been saying it all day, but he hasn't added nice shot. Biggest lead of the day for Michigan. 15 for Ramil Robinson. Coleman down low again on the ground. Won't go. That's a shot that just has to go down. Robinson to Griffin missed the shot. Followed by Vaughn. 14 rebounds by Vaughn, and that one was with bad intentions. I think a T.O. is ready for Illinois State. T.O. is in order. SOP, if it were. 15 17 left. 49-40, Michigan's biggest lead, and for Illinois State, I guess you dance the dance, you pay the piper. They're all hitting that offensive rebound. They're shooting quick. There they go. They, there's the guard, Blair, in there. The other guard's in there. No one is back to get Mr. Caleb, and he <laughs> puts it away. Did it with a little emphasis, didn't Oh, he? yeah, yeah. When, you, when that arm curls up like that, you, you're ready for one. Demetrius Caleb, 6-1, slams it down. <laughs> And we know Reveal Robinson could do that. So both guards, airborne. So a really crucial part of this game for Illinois State. Jackson open, but he's not taking those shots now. There's no doubt in my mind. Talking to. In and out, they cannot get one to go. Fought with his 15th rebound. And with him rebounding like that, Illinois State hitting four on the boards. Michigan's going to run. Caleb pulls up quickly. Blair the rebound. Right now, Illinois State getting good shots, just not making. Coleman finally gets one to go. And that was very close to basket interference, too. Yes. Michigan is so big, if you hurry your shot, uh, they'll, they'll really distract you because of their bigness. So it's not only you're missing your shots, you're having people wave at you. Robinson for three. Pemberton the rebound. So Michigan only getting one shot also. The difference is Michigan's making theirs. 
and the Redbirds are missing there as the alley oop. Mr. Jackson has to hurt his hand on that one as he hit the rim. Smacked it on the rim. Wasn't a great pass. <laughs> Caleb. Griffin follows. A couple of pretty bad looking shots too. <laughs> Thomas in traffic waits for help mercifully. Pemberton down low. And they're back to five. Yes, and uh, what looked like a close to being a blowout. Now, as you said, Barry, five points. A big possession right here for Michigan. Well, Michigan has rushed their shots a little bit the last couple times down the floor, too. And Illinois State goes into a zone because they're sucking air. Griffin can't get it. Griffin fights for the rebound. Foul called on Caleb, reaching in on Pemberton. They continue to hang in there. There's a great... He should shoot more. Beautiful form. It was in and out of the basket. And I think they called it the first assault on the ball was good, and then he slapped the wrist when the ball came loose. Now, the thing about Griffin, and all his teammates agree, he can shoot it. He just doesn't. Right, and it makes it more difficult when you do shoot. You only take four or five a game. He's the only starter that shoots under 50%, but it's because he hardly ever shoots. Lines over Bills. That's a pretty tough task. And Vaught now with 16 boards. Mills, the gimme, missed it. Vaught tried to keep it alive, couldn't. Over the back on Vaught. That's his second personal foul. But they were trying to get the ball into Terry Mills. Michigan will go along and forget who their horse is. And I can see why Terry Mills has to remind them ever so often what he can do with the basketball. They'll go five or six minutes. The game will go up and down, up and down. I think that's what happens when you got a big barn. <laughs> got a lot of horses. There's a lot. Elvin Flores comes on now. <laughs> Roberts puts it on the floor. Block foul on Mills. Roberts played with some great people in high school. Dan Jones of Wisconsin, Chad Gallagher of Creighton. They all were at the same high school, South Beloit, Rockford. All right, I'm going to try to tell this story now. Okay? All right, all right. Richard Thomas's mom, her name was Catherine, is the older, you got to take notes here, is the older sister of Elvin Florence. There's going to be about eight shots go by here while I tell that. So that makes him Flores's nephew, and it makes Elvin's mother Thomas's grandmother. So all you genealogists out there will understand that. Do they, uh, I wonder if he calls them uncle. <laughs> Meanwhile, Vaught's fouled by Roberts on the way to the basket. And Roberts is in the game to stay physical. He's going to give up a few fouls. Watch Roberts. He's going to make them earn those easy ones. The Wolverines have not substituted like they did in the first half. They kept everyone fresh by putting uh, Eric Riley in there and Tally. They had some subs in there. You saw that line of Lloyd Watts, 13 points, 17 boards. That's a career. Pemberton leaves. Pemberton has really given Bob Bender some very good minutes. Sean Higgins should be fresh at this point to come in this ball game and uh, look for him maybe to turn it on a little bit on the offensive end. Kayla comes back, Griffin leaves. The, back, the backcourt that was in there was the backcourt that started the season, Griffin and Romeo Robinson. And Lloyd Vaught, just a nice touch of the free throw line. After a seven point game. But there is no dog in this Illinois State team. No way. Michigan comes in that zone, that point drop, with Sean Higgins out on the top trying to get out there. He's slow. There's the spot right there. When Sean is slow getting back, that's what's open. Got to get it up pretty quickly. A loose ball. Mills, a great play to recover. And again, they let him play. And they let him roll. Robinson to Higgins. Blair did a nice job on Higgins, but Higgins with a little hook. Best high school player a few years ago in L.A., Fairfax High School. Everybody was after Sean Higgins. Jumper this time is hit by Flores. 
And that's a three. And that couldn't have come at a better time for Illinois State. A bonus. He doesn't score very often off the bench. They get 75% of their scoring from their starters, Illinois State. Now that shot put him over his season's average. Higgins missed the jumper. And Hicks comes away with it for the Redbirds. It's a real gamble going with your second unit for Illinois State, but it's paying off. Yeah, oddly enough, it didn't in the first half. Right, that's when they went down the two. Flores will try it again, no shot. Offensive foul. I could never see how a basketball player can step out of bounds receiving a pass. Yeah, that's true. I call that an offensive foul. He was on the line, 53-47, 11.06 left. We'll be back. Barry Tompkins with Mike Rice. Six-point game. Illinois State is still there. Plenty of time. 11.06 left. Score out of the East Regional in Atlanta. And this will come as something of a surprise. Old Bob Morris playing pretty close with Kansas, aren't they? Jared Durham won the Northeast Championship. Now he has his Robert Morris Colonial right there. Well, the thing about them, I'm sure it applies in this sport as well as to some others, that the first year you play to get there and the next year you play to win. They got there last year. Arizona blew them away in the first round. Right. This year now they're not odd. They're playing pretty well against the team that I think is one of the best teams in the country. Yes, same type of team as Arizona. They pass the basketball and play good defense. Nice pass by Robinson to Mills. Won't go, though. Caleb put back. All five Michigan players we're within rebound reach, so they're really going after the offensive board now. Neither team, though, really shooting the lights out in the second half. No, 5 for 16 for Illinois State and 7 for 18 for Michigan. But since that period when Michigan came back in the first half, Illinois State is now 6 of 30. That's 20%. Even I can figure that out. Yes. Robinson misses. I'm not sure what Flores was doing there, but I know he wasn't going after the ball. Well, he has Eric Riley, all seven foot of him. He had him boxed out, and someone didn't box Caleb out, but uh, Caleb had it bounce off his foot. All five people for Illinois State have to work to get those rebounds. Jackson, who just has not shot the ball in the second half. That's as close to an offensive set as we have seen from Illinois State in this half. A clear out for Thomas working on Caleb. Jackson behind a screen for three. Too hard. Mills the rebound. Alley oop. Caleb on the one. You know, we're going to look at the relay replay on this, I'm sure. And it's very, very close to a push-off with the left arm. We'll take a look right here. Another beautiful pass. Watch that left arm out there. Ooh, almost a push-off, as we said. Very close. As it is, though, counted. And Caleb will go to the line with a chance for a three-point play. Now, there's the arm. I guess he was so strong defensively coming into the man, they didn't take a look at the arm. Robinson with a great vision, though. And don't the great point guards all have that? Second try. Caleb again. Missed this one. Third try. No, Mills lost it. And a foul going to be called on Caleb, reaching in on Thomas. Gary Grant, the great guard from Michigan's uh, great ball clubs a few years ago, was on the bench earlier with his Michigan Wolverines. He's playing with the Clippers. And I think they play tonight, so uh, he was here earlier in the day and then left. He was here at the practice yesterday, too, glad handing some of his old teammates. Ten-point lead now. Illinois State, again, in one of those situations they have to keep contact. Big Ten has lost one team, Indiana, so far. A lot of people thought, uh, oh, Illinois lost. I forgot about Illinois. And a lot of people thought maybe Indiana didn't deserve it anyway, but the Big Ten is so strong. For the first time in history, seven teams went to the dance. Robinson had a shot that time, passed that one up, took that one instead. Nice ball. He's just, he's a lottery. He just is showing me so much more maturity than last year when uh, he'd get it in crunch time and score, but now he just distributes it so well. Sees the court so well. There's an easy turnover. Here's Robinson between the legs, change direction, back it out, take the jumper, miss the shot. But he did everything the right way. He backed away. The defensive man didn't come with him, took the jump shot. Not a bad change of direction either. Between the legs at full tilt. Yes. A lot of people were saying that he may have the same future as Earl the Pearl that played at Syracuse. 
but Earl was more of a ball handler who uh, didn't see the court early in the offense as well. I think uh, Reveal Robinson would fall in another category. Yeah, well, I, I always had Earl Monroe as, as a one-on-one -on -one player, basically. I don't mean that in a bad way, but I'm just a great one-on-one -on -one player. And I think because Reveal is a great one-on-one -on -one player, they, people have, but he is also a point guard. Pemberton at the line. We, ha we haven't seen Scott Fowler a lot in the second half for Illinois State. And uh, they've gone pretty much with uh, this group. Can't help but wonder if Fowler's back may not be bothering him. Remember, saw him laying down a little while. You're right, earlier. Barry. I forgot about that. Since Wimpy has lost all that weight, uh, maybe his back is bothered. One out of two, and that's not good enough at this stage of the game. Nine-point Michigan lead, still plenty of time left. Fall away by Voss. Oh. Riley smacked his hand on the backboard also. Jackson for three, won't go. They need Ricky. Yeah, he just hadn't been getting it done. He played with Roy Marble at Flint Beecher, and he was a great offensive player there. They could use a little of it right now. And they look inside to Pemberton. And Pemberton has it rejected by Mills to Jackson for three. Yeah. Yes. Made me hold my breath there. <laughs> Jackson with 14, but I'll tell you, it's been a long dry spell. First points of the second half for him. He had a terrible tragedy this season, March 4th. His mother passed away with cancer. A real tribute to him that he can really get after. Offensive foul on Caleb, his third. And I'll tell you, Illinois State just refuses to fold up. I would be nervous now if I were the Michigan coaching staff. This club will not die. You keep letting them back in the game, there's going to be some point they're going to jump up and bite you. 59-53 Michigan. We'll be back. Six-point game. Illinois State just won't fold the tent. They're there. 7.41 remaining in the game. Let's take a minute to thank some of the people who helped us so much. The NCAA Basketball Committee, their representative, Gary Cunningham, the tournament manager, Steve Holton, and the tournament media coordinator, Shane Schroeder. From Illinois State, their athletic director, Ron Wellman, their head basketball coach, Bob Bender, was a big help to us yesterday, and his staff, Tom LaMonica, the sports information director from Michigan, their athletic director, Jack Wiedenbach, Head basketball coach Steve Fisher. Again, always nice to talk to Steve Fisher, one of the sincerely good guys in college basketball coaching, and their SID, Bruce Maddich. Thanks to everybody for their help. And again, thanks to Dennis Manishin, who's given us all the numbers here. A stats man without fear. Does a tremendous job. Bob Bender, and can't say enough good things about him either. I'll tell you, he really prepared his team to play this game, win or lose. Yeah, he uh, just took what he could and uh, they're in it's not pretty by any means but they're there and if they shot it better they would be more than just there Bills off the glass and in they, their defense is to stop mills inside when he goes outside it's a real plus Bill Frieder, the students at Michigan and some of the alumni weren't happy with his X's and O's I'm just wondering if they'll be able to recruit like Bill Frieder in the future. You look out here, he has the best player from Massachusetts, the best player from California. He kept all the good ones home from Michigan. You'll see in the future. Fowler made the shot at the other end, and here's a foul going to be called on Blair trying to fight through a screen. That's an interesting foul, only in the sense that I'm not sure that foul would have been called 10, 15 minutes ago. It wasn't called. <laughs> they were letting them do a little more bumpy. Coleman, Coleman comes back and Roberts leaves for the Redbirds. I think recruiting is the answer in the Big Ten. Every coach, they've been there so long, very few coaching changes, so there's no surprises. You know how to play everybody. If you get the great personnel, which the Big Ten does, then you can win games. They're going to Mills. Turn around. Won't we'll go. Bought the rebound and a putback. Well, now they've found the horse. They forgot about Mr. Mills for about 10 minutes. Now that they're going to him, things are good. Vaught is the guy who's getting it done on the boards. At both ends. That's an eight-point game. Jackson tries a three. Got it. 
Just in time. Steve just says they will not go away. Let's see if they go into Mills again. They go right down to Mills. Over Fowler. Missed that one. Fowler the rebound. And they can cut this lead to three. Fowler was trying to create a charge in there. Yes, he was. First time he's done it. Blair has a shot. Missed it. Coleman tried to get it back. Swatted out of bounds. No, it's recovered by Jackson. Would have been Illinois State's ball. Griffin has great hands on defense. Blair's out, baseline. Baby. Rejection by Vaught. Here come the Wolverines. The big play at the right time by Loy Vaught. Caleb backs it out. Demetrius Caleb. Great job bringing it back out. They are not able to get anything down low. Robinson for three. Now that was great intelligent basketball by Demetrius Caleb to get it started. Terry Mills didn't force it, and they found an open Ramil Robinson. Michigan is playing like the national champs. Robinson has 20. Coleman draws a crowd. My man in the time made the shot foul, counted. He goes to the line. That was also kind of like a national champion. <laughs> There's two champs out here tonight. Michigan is doing the right things now, but still cannot pull away. Nice pump fake. Nice call. And significantly, the fourth foul on Terry Mills. Uh-oh. So now you can look for this man to tell his team, get it inside. Interesting decision now Steve Fisher has about Mr. Mills with only five minutes to go in the ball game. Coleman converts the three-point play, and I feel like we're really being redundant when we say this, but they are not going away. So often I felt that's the basket that's going to break it, but it never happens. A lot of bumping and picking going on underneath. Mills is in there in the lane for about six seconds. <laughs> Setting up light housekeeping in there. So Steve Fisher has decided to keep Terry Mills out there. Robinson down low. Count the basket. Is that the basket that might break it? <laughs> nice foul call on Thomas. Nice passing by Mills. He's gone outside. Uh, sees the court perfect. I don't know why they're checking Mills out there so close. I, I imagine they want to put pressure on him, but he's just so big, he can see over everyone. Bob Bender looking up, and what he sees is a seven-point game. It could easily be eight. Get up! Get up! Oh, Still seven. John Clockerty, Gordon Burke, George Evans have done a great job referee in this game, letting the players play. Jackson threw that one up and significantly threw it in. Because if he didn't, he'd have to say bad shot. <laughs> First of the game, he was great. At the end of the game, he's doing the same. And Illinois State goes into a zone. I think it's a good move. They're getting clobbered in the man-to-man -man as of late. They're going to try the zone once. They try to get it down low. Stepping in front was Jackson, but a foul is going to be called on Pemberton. Only four down. So it's a good experiment here by Bob Bender to take a look at the zone and see if it changes the passing pattern of Michigan. One and one for Lloyd Vaught. 17 points, 18 rebounds more than just a bit of a contributor. Missed the front end of a one-and-one. And, one. and that's an 82% free throw shoot. Oh. One wonders what Sean Higgins thinks at this time. He's always been a go-to guy down the stretch. He's on the bench. And down low to Coleman and back to Thomas who leans in. That's goaltending. And this, folks, is a two-point game. <laughs> And the crowd that was not in the game now all of a sudden loves Illinois State. That's right. They're not only in the game. They are rooting for the guy from Illinois, decided underdogs, who are down to two. We'll be back. Well, I tell you, Illinois State wins this game. is going to be a big run on sponge rubber fingers in Illinois. Yeah, they're... Uh... They believe they can win now, both the team and the crowd, and I think the coach believes it. I don't think there's any question about it. Illinois State 6 of 15, that's not a high percentage, 33% from three-point range. Michigan's only thrown it up seven times, but they've got to be believing in themselves. 
They have hung in there. They keep coming back, and it's a two-point game, Michigan with the ball. And they're out of the zone, back to that man-to-man. -man. They're going to do what they do best. Higgins really hasn't been much of a factor on the offense in this game. But he's back in the game for offensive reasons. Robinson steps in, got around a man, lost the ball, picked it up, missed the shot, and Higgins the reverse. Illinois State will not go away. They were down by as many as 10 in the second half. They were shooting it atrociously. At one point, six for 30. They have come back. They trail by four. They have confidence in themselves. Right now, I'm sure they feel like they can win the game. Nice block that time, however, by Lloyd Vaughn, who has done everything. Bob Bender doesn't think it was a good block. He's really up yelling at John Clockerty. Yeah, well, you might have an argument. He was close. Very close to a goal 10. A lot of luck with the last Michigan basket to put them four up. Higgins, a long three misses. Coleman, a rebound. Higgins has been on the bench the whole second half, and he comes in and throws that up. And I, Steve Fisher is not only gnashing on his teeth, he's gnashing on his jaw. To the basket is Coleman. And right now, if you just walked into this arena and didn't know these two teams, you'd say Illinois State's the national, defending national champions and not Michigan. They're looking like winners right now. Very relaxed and a little nervous look on Michigan. And the crowd that's here for that second ball game is now Illinois State's fan. Second game, of course. Here's a steal. Ricky Jackson, a cripple. Tie game. Ricky Jackson from Flint, Michigan. Never recruited by the Wolverines. He would love to beat him tonight. Timeout for Steve Fisher. 70 Illinois State. 70 Michigan. 132 left. Can it happen again? We'll be back. Three minutes ago, the score of this game was Michigan 66, Illinois State 58. Now we're tied at 70. Ricky Jackson steps in front. Yes, and he's been the steal leader on this club all year. Very slow in the middle of the game. He had a really horrendous shooting slump, but he started great, and he's finishing great. And out of the timeout, Illinois State zone defense. Good move by Bob Bender. Take away Michigan's inside game. Bender has done a wondrous job coaching in this game. His team was prepared. They were not on at all. Higgins for three. I thought they might take him out at the timeout and get the three guards in there for rhythm. But Sean Higgins shows he should be there. Shooters shoot. He has not had a good shooting night. But when it came down to it, Jackson for three short. Fought the rebound. That is his 20th rebound. 46 seconds. And they'll back it out. Foul by Blair on Robinson. That's probably a good foul. That's only the third team foul, so no one's going to be shooting. They can go after steals. Probably disguised a little better than that. The fellow on the bench. Oh, for... no, that's 17 fouls. I'm reading the wrong character. The, the scoreboard's high above us. This tattoo's hurt, I'll tell you. The fellow on the bench for Illinois State, Sam Skerich. If Illinois State should go on and win this game, Skerich, of course, would be a part of this game, and his dad is an assistant coach at Northern Iowa. And they had the big win, so it... Uh, what a day for the Scaritch family if right. Illinois State wins this. A lot, of, a lot of upsets, a lot of nervous coaches. Robert Morris, only one down Kansas. And they've got a lot of talking in that huddle. As you said earlier, Ramil Robinson in crunch time is a much better foul shooter than he is 68% in the regular game, so... I think he'll step up here and show why he was such a great player last year going down the stretch. I started to tell you a little bit earlier about this large crowd that really is on hand for the second game tonight, which is an emotional game, to be sure, between two good teams, New Mexico State and Loyola Marymount. And they have all adopted the Illinois State Redbirds. Yes. Ricky Jackson just... It wasn't the same shot he was taking earlier, that last three-point shot. And they just have to make sure they don't get too impatient because they have the crowd. They have a lot going for them right now. And uh, they're so close. 
to pulling the upset of the year. The Redbird trying to get the crowd pumped up here. He won't have any problem. Bob Bender will leave this arena with his head high, win or lose, he should. Mike Krzyzewski, disciple, coached with Krzyzewski at Duke until this year, came on board. His team started out a little raggedly by his own admission, but they finished strongly, won the Missouri Valley Tournament over Southern Illinois, and have played Michigan right down to the bone. Ramil Robinson at the free throw line, no stranger to crunch time free throws. And you only have to go back as far as the NCAA final last year to indicate that fact. P.J. remembers it. It's distinctive. Got it. Didn't pull the string. Nice follow through. Sign of a true champion. Back at the bench. That's Roberts looking on. Bob Bender has used his bench freely. Saved his people. And his timeout. He has a lot going. And he's five down. They need a three. Thomas worked on by Caleb. Thomas looking for help. Down low it goes to Blair. And Blair missed the shot. Bought the rebound, but bought an elbow. He's fouled from behind, however, by Pemberton. And Vaught can shoot foul shots. Bob Bender is saying that Vaught had his hand up through the cylinder. You take a look at it and see what you think. John Pemberton, his fourth personal. Well, he did, but not before the shot came down. Right. Yeah, it, didn't, it didn't bother the shot at all. I think Randy just missed an easy one, and he knows it. And that's a guy you don't want to put at the free throw line. He missed the front end of one and one a couple of minutes ago, but as you see by his percentage, that is not going to happen too many times. This is the kind of game, if Michigan can pull it off, will really send them thinking that we got away with one. Now let's earn one. And a lot of teams come back strong the second game. Yeah, it really does. That's happened to a number of teams. A lot of teams get a scare in the first round. Actually, Arizona in the first game here today got a bit of a scare. Southern Florida played pretty good. Sure did. Steve Fisher with a lot of ties at Illinois State. Still a two-possession game. Jackson too hard. Threw up a brick. Blair gets it back. Jackson tries it for about 30 feet. Missed everything. Coleman missed a slam. Two on one, three on one. Caleb backs it out. 12 seconds left. And now this one is just about in Michigan's pocket. And they still had time if they'd have made that dunk. They'd have been three down with a foul and a missed foul. They could have done it. They did everything right the last eight minutes and then kind of let up the last 45 seconds. Steve Fisher will know that he dodged a bullet here. He'll sleep well. And as you said, Barry, a very nice man in a very difficult situation at Michigan, I feel. Fisher talked about complacency. I, I haven't seen his team be complacent. I just think he ran into a team that was pumped up. Jackson missed everything. That time. Thomas steps in, tries it, won't go, game's over. And Michigan had to play 40 minutes to win this game, I'll tell you that. Bob Bender, congratulations to Steve Fisher. Fisher's team wins by six. The national champions move on. By the nation's all fiber optic network, U.S. Sprint. By Sharp Electronics. From sharp minds come sharp products. By State Farm Insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And by B.F. Goodrich T.A. Tires, the athletic shoes for your car. How sweet the taste of victory for Steve Fisher, Ramil Robinson, and the Michigan Wolverines. But I'll tell you, it's a taste that he didn't have until about the last 40 seconds. Let's go to Mike Rice now with the winning coach. Mike? Steve, uh, you had a lot of different experiences last year winning ball games. Uh, what would you think going down the stretch tonight? This was a lot like last year, Mike. Uh, our first couple of games against Xavier and South Alabama were a lot like this. Tough, hard fought right to the end, and we kept them in their seats. Really, it could be a plus, uh, thinking maybe you got away with one tonight and then come back and earn the next one. Well, you have to win when you don't play especially well, and um, Illinois State caused us maybe not to play well. Terry Mills did not shoot it tonight. He, you didn't see the Terry Mills we've seen all season. How about it, Ramil? Uh, was there any point in the ball game you thought it might slip away? 
No, I don't think uh, uh, you can think like that in a big game like this. You're going to think you're going to win it all the way until the buzzer goes off. And I think the guys did that when we needed a shot. We got the right shots, and the guys came through today. You rebounded much better at the end of the ball game, but you got to give Illinois State a lot of credit. They really stayed with you on the rebounds tonight. Yeah, they beat us. They beat us. They, they, they out hustled us to them in the first half, and we said that was an area where we had to dominate, and they had 10 offensive rebounds at half. I don't know what they wound up with. Quite a few. Ramil, uh, any thoughts on games coming up? Uh, are they going to be all of this close? Well, um, I hope not. Uh, Coach Fisher don't have no gray hair yet, so we don't want him to get him any. Well, Barry, it was a uh, interesting ball game here tonight. All right, Barry. Interesting, I think, is a fair way to describe it. Illinois State got out of the blocks very quickly. They played extremely well, and they stayed in the game. Then Michigan made a run at the end of the first half, and it looked like, well, okay, now it's time for Illinois State to go away. Well, they didn't do that. They stayed right in the game until the final 35 seconds, and that's credit to Bob Bender and his coaching staff. First-year coach who has done a marvelous job. He's going to get some talent at Illinois State, and it's not to say he doesn't have it now, but things are only going to improve. Look at the shooting, 28 of 88. That's not going to win a lot of games for you, and yet here he is staying right in the ballgame until the last gasp with the defending national champions. Michigan, 30 of 72. Illinois State got off 16 more shots than the Wolverines. Wolverines went to the free throw line a lot more. The rebounding edge, not to Michigan, no, to the smaller team, Illinois State. The Redbirds just did a terrific job. Bob Bender did everything right. Only thing he didn't do was win a game. Yeah, right at the end, Ricky Jackson was scoring. He was just so hot. And then he, a uh, couple bad shots, and uh, that's what happened. I, I thought Michigan he held their poise. They, they were losing the crowd, and uh, uh, when you, you have the crowd against you in a big ball game like this, uh, it's very difficult to keep your po poise. And as Coach Frieder said, uh, his ace, Mills, was not, he couldn't throw it in the ocean. And That was true of Mills, that was true of Sean Higgins, but then Sean Higgins makes the big three-point shot that breaks the tie at 70. So it's the old thing of the guys who shoot the ball are going to keep shooting the ball, and if they're not going down, sooner or later they are. Well, Sean Higgins uh, never was one to worry about missing a shot, and I guess that's the guy you have to put in there at the end. He'll take it. What does that do for a coach now? Does that give Steve Fisher perhaps a little bit of ammunition saying, hey, look, we may be the national champions, but look what happened to you in the first game. Let's not let that happen again. I really think it does. You know, Steve didn't look at it that way, but I really think a team now comes in, they listen a lot better in the workouts the day before. They don't take anything for granted. I think if you can steal a victory, and Michigan did dominate tonight, but it got very close at the end, and they're a superior ball club. Illinois State just, they, they hung in there with heart. So uh, I think we'll see a different Terry Mills and a different Michigan club Sunday night. I think now if you're Bob Bender, you got to say, well, this wasn't only the last game in 1990. This is the first game in 1991. That really gives them a leg up. We almost beat the national champions. Well, they're uh, Steve Fisher's undefeated <laughs> in national tournament play. That's right. Steve Fisher's still on a roll. He's still in the tournament. And that, after all, is the most important thing. And for us here in Long Beach, that, too, is a wrap. A look at the final scoreboard once more shows the Michigan Wolverines 76 and the Illinois State Redbirds 70. This telecast, a production of the NCAA Communications Department, Dave Kaywood, the assistant executive director. The executive producer of NCAA Productions of Jim Marcioni. The production coordinators, Gina McNeil and Kerwin Hudson. This game was produced by Jim's Rake and directed by Doug Freeman. So for Mike Rice, I'm Barry Tompkins saying so long from the Long Beach Arena and reminding you once more that the final score in this one, the Michigan Wolverines.